Hi there and welcome along to another workout for you to row along to. Today's workout is one of those ones which time-wise is perfectly manageable and it's all just down to the pace as to how intense it gets. What we're gonna do is five seven minute intervals with one minute rest in between. Now, if you're doing this as week five, session three of the 2K Redux plan, then I want you to keep this as a bottom tier fitness building workout. And that means that you're gonna be rowing it at 20 strokes a minute and at 2K plus 18 pace the whole way through. Now, if you wanna turn this into a slightly more intense hard workout then just go a little bit faster still hold that 20 strokes per minute but instead of 2k plus 18 maybe look at round about 2k plus 14 and then if you want to make it a real maximum effort then just try and see how fast you can go at 20 strokes a minute for each of those intervals all right so rather than just giving you one way to do this i've given you the three tiers it's not up to me how fast you row so i've given you the option all right so let's get into our four minute warm up as always. And you know how we do that. We start off by setting up our machine. Head straight to the drag factor and set that where you want it to be or on whatever machine you're using, just make sure that it's set at a point where you connect nicely, but it doesn't feel like you're rowing a bin lorry down a brick road, all right? Next up, go to your monitor and set it to eye height if you can, so you're not looking up or down. And finally, your foot straps, well, should cover around about the bottom lace in your shoe or get to let you get to a point where you can get to the front of the machine with your shins inverted vertical position comfortably. Sorry, I started thinking about something else then halfway through that line. Right, four minute warm up. We're going to start 18 strokes a minute and just hold that pace for a couple of minutes. Um, or we're going to start gentle like a, oh, whatever. Just start, John. Right, three, two, <laughs> one. Let's go. Right, what I meant was um, just like a body weight squat to start, okay? So you're really just thinking about connecting with your legs and then trying to connect your arms and hands at the same time. So as you push with your feet, push, that's when you want the handle to connect with the flywheel. You don't want your feet to go first because then your butt scoots back and you don't want your hands to go first because then you're all over the place and you lose your leg drive. So just work on that timing as if you're still here and watching after my ridiculous entry to this warm-up. Sometimes I wonder whether I keep all these fluffs in just to prove, just to kind of really hammer home that I'm not one of the other guys. I am your doofus companion. I know what I'm on about, but sometimes I uh, anyway, so start to think about your pace and think about giving a bit more of a push from your legs, maybe close to 2k plus 20 pace, which is basically 20 seconds slower than the average 500 meter time for a 2000 meter time trial more info about that in the description of this video but it may be a bit too late now <laughs> just make sure you're putting in a good solid push but you're not at max right now okay one more stroke and then let's put one foot on the floor carry on rowing and this is just about kind of getting your balance right it kind of activates a few more muscles doing this. Gives you a chance to work on your compression into the front of the machine and also to concentrate on a good solid push from the leg that's still in. All right, swap feet. Continue on with the other leg. You might find one of your legs is stronger than the other or that your balance is better on one leg than it is on the other. Maybe you're a pirate. <laughs> That's not meant to be rude to people who are amputees, by the way. It could be culturally insensitive. Right, straight legs and roll with your back and arms. So keep your legs straight, swing over your hips, pull in your arms. 
then push out your arms, swing back over your hips. Okay, this sequencing of your hip rock and arm pull is really important. When we get into talk about technique, you'll see what I mean. Right, roll to the front of the machine with straight arms and just push out from the front, okay? Now, try, really try to hold that forward lean as you're doing this. So don't worry too much about the power of your legs. Just think about connecting with your legs and pushing while holding that forward lean as long as you can. Although I just found myself doing <laughs> really hanging down when I was doing that, so maybe not. Last one. Right. You keep on moving up and down the rail, have a quick drink. I'll take a professional pill and then I'll explain once again what it is we're doing today. Ah, if only such a thing as a professional pill existed, eh? Anyway, what we're doing today is five seven minute intervals with one minute rest in between. Now, if you're gonna row this as week five, session three, then I want you to do this at 20 strokes a minute, but at 2K plus 18 pace. That's in order to keep it as a good bottom tier fitness building workout that isn't gonna zap all your energy uh, before your 2K time trial at the end of this week. Or if you wanna make it a mid tier workout, then you can go run about 2K plus 14. Or if you wanna make it a top tier, then you can go run about say 2K eight or faster. All right, just try and get as much as you can out of this for the seven minute intervals. It's your choice, but just make sure it fits in with whatever plan you're doing and make sure that you have enough energy to get through the row, all right? So we might as well just get straight into it. Plan today is to talk to you in the first interval about technique, etc., and then the next four intervals, I'm going to continue the story of why I am the one sitting here talking to you. See, I should have told you that at the very start, but I thought, haha, I'll spring it on you now when you have already got you strapped into the machine and you can't go anywhere. <laughs> anyway, right, let's go then. So, in three, two, one, and we're off. So, 20 strokes a minute. 2K plus 18 pace. Which should feel quite nice and manageable. Should really just be a little bit more than that body weight squat that I was talking about for the warm up. Should feel you're putting in a bit more of a push from the legs. But it should also feel nice and smooth and not like you're having to overpower and fight against the machine. Now again, remember, if the machine feels really heavy and you are kind of like it feels like you have to do a lot of your rowing by pulling your arms then there's two things really that that could be. The first one could be that you've got your drag factor or resistance set way too high, which means that you're having to fight against the weight of the machine as you drive and you can't quite get the leg power in to hang off the handle so you have to fight it by really pulling with your arms and that brings me to the second option which is technique so if you think your drag factor is okay then just look at your technique for instance, the importance of the forward lean, okay? Remember I was, if you can remember the, the rather random warm up, I was saying to hold on to that forward lean. It really is so important to try and get that lean into the front of the machine and by lean, I mean pivot over the hips as you generate that forward lean. It's not 
a crumple from the lower back. But get into that one o'clock forward lean. And then as you start the stroke, keep your arms straight. Okay, that's really important for what you're trying to do for power transfer. Especially this idea of holding the forward lean. If you've got your arms straight, as you hold that forward lean, when you push with the legs to explode the power into the machine, you should be hanging off the handle still with straight arms and that forward lean and hang is all it takes to put the power into the machine it's not about pulling at all just about a direction of power up through your body and then in to the flywheel and by direction of power, I mean like directing traffic. So straight arms, forward lean, power should go in. And if you can hold that forward lean for as long as possible, the more of your leg power goes into the machine. So the difference between just going quickly and swinging like that or hold swing right at the back hold swing it's a real surge of power difference like at the same stroke rate I went from 203 to 159 and not particularly thinking about putting more force from my legs so anyway if you feel you're fighting against the machine check your technique make sure you're leaning in at the front and then trying to hold that lean with straight arms that helps to have good posture as well braced core at the front to help send that power up through your body and then braced core at the back to make sure you're stable to just rock back over your hips to get into that forward lean again you don't want to go all saggy and crumpled and then just make sure the handle is past your knees before they bend. Ideally you want to get handle, body, knees. And the whole sequence is legs, body, arms, arms, body, legs. Okay. Now I'm going to return from time to time to talk about technique through this row but that's the first interval almost finished last stroke there we go that was a nice and gentle start still make sure and drink although this is a fitness building bottom tier if this is how you're doing it you have to make sure to stay hydrated. Because it's a total of 35 minutes rowing and you're only getting this one minute in between to just keep your heart rate down. But your heart's still pumping away. So it's not gonna feel like it's a complete rest rest. So 
it is going to be kind of feeling it's almost like 45 minutes by the time you add in the warm up and cool down as well. So stay hydrated, please. That's all I'm saying. Okay, 10 seconds to go. Have a little wiggle of your backside to make sure you're seated comfortably. Five, four, three, two, one, go. So back into the same stroke rate and the same pace. Now, if you're doing this as a mid tier, then I want you to hold the pace that you've picked. If you've gone 2K plus 14, I want you to hold 2K plus 14 through this whole workout. I don't want you to suddenly just for the last two intervals go, oh, I'm tired now. I'm going to put this back to a bottom tier. You chose your path. Like one of those books you used to get, the choose your own adventure things. If you chose to fight the orc, then you have to fight the orc. Okay? So, you may or may not have been rowing the past few weeks of this plan and had to suffer through <laughs> no sorry had to continue rowing at your pace once you found your groove and I kind of just kept you company with the story of my rowing history like why I'm the one here rowing on these videos and not some other guy or at least why I feel that I'm in the position to be the one to do that so up until now we've gone through how I got into rowing my first races where I did okay, but didn't quite read the monitor right and stuff. On to better times, winning the English champs, winning the Scottish champs, coming second in the British, getting a British record for the 1k and then subsequent world records for one day before Tim Mail came along <laughs> I think that's where we left it now in the two hour row that I did a few days ago I was discussing the importance of motivation finding your motivation in different places if need be and it's got to be said there's something about just racing 2k's and 1k's that for me started to wear me down a bit all that high-end training and not that I was looking for anything new but I got a phone call or an email or something if I know it was at the Devon Indoor Champs talking to my French friend Jean Sebastien lovely guy got muscles on top of his muscles uh, and he was saying that they wanted to get a team together to try and break the world record for the 100 kilometer row so mixed team or mixed small team so I think it was 
eight people maximum and three of them I think had to be women and because one of them was 37 I think we were in the 30 to 39 category to try and break the record so I'm like yeah 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 I'll do that having a history of people bring these kind of things up it never happens so I'd say I'll say yes when it doesn't happen I'll still have been remembered as the good guy who said he'd do it anyway come January I get another email from JS saying uh, bonjour mon ami that's all I know French wise he's like le criterium long will be something like May the something he's like we have the rest of the team in place just need you to confirm and that will happen oh man I've got to do this now so booked flights to Rennes in France which is I don't know about an hour and a half train ride away from Paris to the military training base and started training and the plan was that we do run about 20 seconds each and then rotate to the next person to be continued five strokes to go three more one more it's probably the longest I've ever gone without talking <laughs> right have a drink keep your legs moving doesn't matter what pace you're doing at that keep your body moving I still prefer not to not to actually row in between intervals I prefer just to rock up and down like this keep things moving but not actually overexert myself and use up energy that should really be used going into the machine more important for sprint intervals ones like this you could probably get away low low level rowing but I'm just so used to stopping completely ah. all right interval three is coming up in 10 seconds reseat your seat make sure you're happy we're going in five four three two one go uh, remember technique here same pace same stroke rate so same technique want to be fluid in and out of it hold that forward lean drive with the legs and then swing over your back and pull in the handle then handle straight back out no pause rock back over your body and then slide forwards by bending your knees if you find you're having to throw the handle over your knees then you're getting your sequencing wrong okay so really work on handle past knees before they bend right so training began for the 100k team event and so effectively what I was doing was rowing or what I would be doing was rowing for 20 seconds flat out then resting for 3 minutes 20 so that tells you how many people were rowing maybe it was 10 or 11 then anyway that's what I was doing row for 20 seconds 
rest, 320. Sounds easy. Until you factor in that I was going to do that a hundred times. And basically it'd work out when about 10k in total. But it would all be at eye bulging sprint pace. So my um, 100 meter pace, which is effectively what I'd be doing in all of these intervals. My, if I sit down and really try and beast out 100 meters, I'll maybe, if I'm lucky, nudge it to 119 pace but it'll fall back quite quickly to about 122. The goal of this challenge was to try and hold 124 pace the whole way. So the only thing going for me was that because of how these team things work, I'd be starting from a spinning flywheel. So what happens is somebody rows their 20 second piece, but with three strokes to go, the next person comes next to them and kind of helps them with the handle to get the timing right the original person kind of falls off the machine to the side and then the next person climbs on and continues rowing hopefully without the flywheel slowing down by much which if you get the timing right, should happen. Should only really say we were keeping it going around about 124. By the time I climbed on, took my first stroke, it was usually only at 128. And then within a couple of strokes, back up to 124 again. Anyway, so that was in the actual record attempt, but of course, for training, it was just me in here on my own. So I thought this is going to be five hours worth of rowing, I'm going to have to try and do equivalent try and work out how to train for this effectively and efficiently so I took a look for the longest film I had which I think was a it was Mission Impossible Rogue Nation maybe the one where he goes free breathe diving into the big computer thing anyway that was just over three hours long so I figured I'll just do 20 second bursts and instead of 3 minutes 20 rest I'll take 2 minutes rest in between so 20 second burst Two minutes rest and then back up I go again so I just sat watched Tom Cruise for three hours and tried it the difference being of course that every time I started my 
20 seconds it was from a dead flywheel but as you'll probably know it's actually really good training the power needed to get the flywheel up to speed as quick as possible all right two one oh yeah so if the flywheel's stopped you're basically you've got your boat in the water and you're like how oh, can i get this going again get the momentum up so the first one is all about big explosive power from the legs and that launch of your back to get the flywheel up and then it's just about maximum speed and trying to hold that maximum speed I mean you should try it one day just watch your back if you're going to do that because like I say if that's a hundred starts at full power if you don't have that proper technique of leaning forwards and then swinging all that power goes to your lower back and you can end up injured so be careful 10 seconds to go two more intervals to go five four three two one go <clears throat> so do remember that doesn't matter what tier you're rowing this one in whether it's bottom middle or top really try and take the power through that forward lean that's what today is all about is holding that forward lean to not only get that power into the machine but safely get that power into the machine of course Tom Cruise would be doing all his own stunts so he'd be rowing it and he'd probably be blowing us all out the water he really is an incredible thing he is your kind of movie star's movie star I know he had his wobble from a PR point of view when he was jumping up and down on couches but if you look at him the things he does he's just amazing even if you look at Mission Impossible Fallout when he jumped the building broke his ankle and you, you can see him <laughs> still trying to scrabble up to continue really impressive the dedication to what he does is just amazing it does make you wonder what it would be like to work for as someone who edits TV and would obviously have dreams to edit movies I think it would be great to be part of one of his shows anyway less about Tom Cruise more about me I'm more amazing does he have a world record on the concept too bet you he doesn't but do I that's the question we know that I had the world record for the 1k and I'm now in France so three months of training not always watching Mission Impossible but practicing what I'm meant to be doing doing a lot of squats deadlifts practicing rowing in socks which is the first time I'd ever come across it because in order to help the transitions between rowers everybody was rowing in socks because it's really easy to slip your feet in and out ta-da of the straps so I 
climb aboard a plane to Schiphol, Amsterdam, and I'm, I met a very nice Dutch woman on the plane who I proceeded to bore about my rowing antics. Again, go back to the two hour row for my thoughts on who to talk to rowing about. Uh, and then got on the a tiny little plane from Schiphol to Rennes in France and then I landed and suddenly thought hang on I have absolutely no idea how to get to the training barracks I've not made any arrangements no one's been in touch oh dear have I made a mistake and then I'm just standing there with all my rowing and my rowing fitness matters jacket on and stuff and a somewhat adorable French girl comes up and says are you John Stevenson? are you rowing with JS? and I'm like well she knows enough I'm quite happy to get into this strange girl's car I might wake up in a bathtub <laughs> with my kidneys removed but I'll take a chance anyway turns out she could have done that she was studying medicine sure she would have made a very tidy job of it but half an hour later safely delivered at the military barracks in Rennes because JS the guy that got me into this is the PT instructor for the French army so if ever you wanted to know credentials for being fit JS is it he teaches fit people to be fitter anyway so met up said hello nice dinner met up with people I knew fortunately some of which didn't or some of them spoke English is what I'm trying to say most of them were French and didn't speak English but Tony and Anton Luis a few others were there so that was good news all right two last one one uh, yeah so Luis who I've talked about before racing him I beat him for the silver in the British he was part of the team as was Anton Kiwi guy who I bumped into quite a lot through the years two of them lived together kind of went hand in hand quite a lot where one went and the other went so it was the two of them uh, me um, and really I can't remember the names of most of them uh, but anyway so we're all gathered round nice dinner off the bed early start bearing in mind I'm still trying to be a lightweight status at this point all right seven seconds to go a bit late to the start of this one four three two one go <clears throat> that was ben so ben marcel he was the young guy <sighs> he was a lot of fun best sideburns you've ever seen i'll try and find photos and post them on the youtube community page and the Facebook page as well anyway so wake up in the morning and I've not had a chance to weigh myself obviously so because normally before a race I'll have scales 
be able to weigh myself to know if I can have coffee or food or anything. But without the benefit of scales in my room, I had to down a shot of espresso to wake up and then wander off to the gymnasium where they were doing the event. Fortunately, I was 74.1. So no woes at all. And I could then get fired into protein bars, energy balls, croissants, some nice French coffee, ready for it all to start in a couple of hours. And there were loads of different races on. There was a tandem marathon. Two guys that were swapping every 2K. One guy would row like a 6.45 2K, fall off. The next guy would climb on, row a 6.40 2K, fall off. And then they just repeat that for a marathon. So that's like 10 times each. Bonkers. There were students doing marathons on their own. There were other teams doing the 100K. There was a woman in a wheelchair doing a arms only marathon. Now that's impressive. Out of all the events I saw that day, that was the most impressive. Anyway, so lots of humming and hawing about heel cups and straps to set up the machine before we start, just to make sure we'd be comfortable. And then we were off. First two changeovers went hideously wrong. Poor Ben ended up slamming down on the beam. It's quite sore, but we got it together. And then it was just a case of rowing as fast as you could. And you've got to say, as much as I'm a technique bore, see when it comes to just trying to squeeze speed out of a monitor, I'll do anything to get up to pace. So mostly really leaning in and yanking back, but at 40 strokes a minute, that was effective. And it all went really smoothly. And then with about two hours to go, someone said, let's shorten the changeovers because we're going slower. And that was like a rag to a bull for me. And you can see in the photos, my <laughs> facial expressions are <laughs> quite comedic as I was just angrily slamming into the machine, trying to get all the pace out, still in my 20 second spurt. And everyone else was holding on well, but with about half an hour to go, you're just clock watching, trying to work out, how are you gonna break the record? how many changeovers to go? How many times am I gonna have to go? Can I hold on? And anyway, so I rolled on to five hours, I think four minutes, and Christina was on, and we saw the distance tick down to zero, and everyone just went 
bananas. I think we broke the existing record by like 15 minutes or something. Really just smashed it out of the park. And then all had a very, very welcomed barbecue and beer afterwards. In fact, I remember going back to my room with a bottle of champagne at like three o'clock in the afternoon, drinking half of it to celebrate with a couple of the guys. And then just falling <laughs> unconscious on the bed for about four hours ready to then go out, have the barbecue and celebrations at night. And that was it. World record holder as part of a team, but it's important to recognize that teamwork is often harder than rowing on your own, relying on others, egging them on and stuff. The funniest part was on the plane back to ski ball. I was wearing my Van Halen Hot for Teacher t-shirt, favorite t-shirt. And uh, the, the air steward who hadn't spoken a word of English to me the whole time saw my t-shirt and went, ah, Hot for Teacher, Van Halen, and started to sing the drum part to me. And I'm like, friends for life, but not really. Not friends for life. He totally forgot about me in the moment I departed the plane. Oh, just be still my beating heart. Anyway, then I had to sprint to get my plane back to Edinburgh, but, which is tough when you're really quite tired after doing a world record breaking row the day before, but managed it, got home. Right, cool down starts in five, four, three, two, one, go. Cool downs down at 18 strokes a minute again. And depending on what you've just been rowing, just attenuate your speed. So if you are, if you've just been doing the bottom tier, then you're really just back to that body weight squat power. Not much into the machine, just enough to activate your legs and arms, let your heart rate come down. If you're the other two tiers, then go a little bit harder and just start to wind down just so that your heart rate and muscles don't kind of just stop. Well, you don't want your heart to stop, obviously, but you want to let it ease its way down, not just go from 175 beats a minute to nothing. Or, sorry, to like 90. I know we waited a minute between the, the last interval and, and the cool down, but that's acceptable you just don't want to stop okay you want to keep rowing to flush out your muscles flush out your brain disconnect both mentally and physically with well for all three tiers it's still a tough row and you've had to put up with my story my tales of france to ben her marcel is that his name I can't remember. Anyway, but it was good. It was fun. I love being in France. Uh, yeah, but it did teach me two things. One, I'm a nightmare on my own because I don't think ahead in terms of getting picked up and stuff. And two, I should really learn a foreign language. It's a disgrace that I can't, I can speak tiny amounts of French and Spanish but only really enough to say, hello, can I have a beer? Which doesn't really get you that far if you're lost, does it? Standing in the middle of an airport and all I'm saying to people is, bonjour, uh, un pierre, s'il vous plaît. And people are gonna be like, what, who's this guy? Anyway, so that's the end of that story. Uh, I guess what we've got left. So week five, session four is the primer before the 2K time trial, um, which actually I can continue this story through. Um, 
because what we're going to do then is like a minute hard and then 19 minutes easy. So in that 19 minutes easy, I can continue the story. Then uh, session five is then the time trial and session six is then the wind down at the end of it to make sure that you're all flushed out, at which point I can wrap up the story of me. Hey, look at that. It's like I almost planned it. Anyway, so there we go. We're all done. I hope you enjoyed that hashtag. Oh, see, I'm not going to say Mission Impossible because that makes it sound like the, the 2K time trial is Mission Impossible and that's not true. So how about we just do hashtag Tom Cruise, see if he sees it. Wouldn't that be funny, huh? Huh? If Tom Cruise came along and watched this and said, hey, I can, I can totally, I'll do that. I'll get, a, I'll get a world record. What distance can I do? And he would. You just sit down and go, what shall I do? Shall I do? Shall I do the 2K? I'll do the 2K, right? Come on. Oh, wait, I'm said a bit more like Rain Man now. I, 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 can I do, can I, can I, can I do 2K? Anyway. Hi, Tom. How are you? <laughs> Anyway, right. Uh, oh, seriously. I mean, you have to wonder, don't you? I mean, you th you'd think that I'd realise that people watch these videos. And even if it is only like, what have I got, like just coming up for 5,000 subscribers right now. So even if it is only 5,000 people, eventually I'm going to bump into someone at a race. Like, it's a small enough community indoor rowing. I'm going to bump into somebody at a race that watches these and they're just going to stand there and probably just give me the side glance and just kind of shake their head. I could be, this could be so much better, couldn't I? I could be so much more professional. I could have my, I could have a baseball cap on backwards. I could have a tanned, bronzed, Adonis-like bare chest as I'm rowing. But then I'd just be Shane. We've already got Shane. We don't need another one of him because he's amazing enough as it is. I think he'd probably be the only person that could take on Tom Cruise. However, if you want comedy rowing, bet you Shane doesn't go into comedy rowing. I know he does all those little funny bits and, and whatever, but he's, he's way too serious when he's on the machine. I've not watched one of his full workouts for a long time because basically I don't want to give him a, an extra view. Um, it's quite petty. Bet he's not watching mine, one of mine though. Bet you. Add us on a postcard if you think either Shane or Austin or Cameron or who else is there? Yeah. Or, you know what? If I, either of you guys have actually watched this, then comment. But you're not going to. Anyway, what I've worked out actually is the, one of the reasons my YouTube algorithm is screwed, for want of a better word, is that because I have all these outros so long and people get fed up and just click away, it means that I get a stunted, <laughs> stunted viewing duration on all my videos. Um, and so that's why it's not promoting it to like more people but I don't stop <laughs> you think I'd learn and I'd finish my role and go thank you very much I'll see you in the next one bye bye but no I carry on talking to you because I'm hoping that you're cooling down at this point you see you're not just kind of sitting there waiting for me to you're sitting in a gym somewhere like this watching the video on top of the monitor going would you just shut up come on John just shut up stop please but anyway so right there we go you can tell it's been a long day this has been one so what's the time right now it's five past nine at night. It's been a long day and now I've kind of fit this one at the end of the end of the day and I've obviously just not spent enough time with people because I'm now just rambling at you. I'm sorry. So anyway, yeah. So the hashtag, if you've made it all the way to the end of this, is going to be hashtag Tom Cruise because, well, why not? And um, yeah. And so the next session, like I said, is uh, for, the, for the 2K Redux plan is uh, week five, session four, which is the stirring the tanks row to prepare you for the time trial. But if you've done this as a standalone or whatever, then go, we'll search through my library, pick something else, and you'll realize that, no, I never get any better. I'm always like this. Anyway, so stay safe, be well, bye-bye.